Hello, I'm ABX Toycat, and welcome back to the video. So I want to go in depth into the Elytra in Minecraft. This is something I've actually wanted to do for a while now, but it's never been possible to measure your speed in game. You can never know exactly how fast you're going unless you're playing the brand new Glide minigame. That's right, they added a speedometer into this minigame, which means we can work out exactly how fast we're going when we do given actions, and we can do like for like tests to see for with 100% certainty how best to fly the Elytra in Minecraft. And that's why I figured I would reveal to you all in today's video. Hopefully, you all do enjoy it. Like the video if you do, because it helps out the channel a lot, and let's know you do like this sort of video, where again, you can actually learn the best way to use the Elytra, rather than just kind of guessing, which is what most people did, and honestly, that's what I did. The way I thought that was best to fly the Elytra is not, which is something that is revealed in today's video. But yeah, let's get straight into it, shall we? And let's start with one of my first tests, which is to do with the end section. So, the end section is a great way to test whether it's worthwhile to lose height now, to then regain it later, and this is something that doesn't feel right to me, it never felt right, but some people always do this. They'll, they'll lose a lot of height at first, and then they'll gain it back later and think, well, that was totally worth it, because of the extra speed boost. However, my test does reveal that this this is in fact kind of silly. So this first one is just me like bouncing up and down. As you can see, really slow by the time it gets to the finish line. This second one is the ideal strategy because you can see how, uh, you know, like I'm I'm slowly fading there, trying to keep the same angle going the entire way through. And then this third one is where I kind of bounce up and down. I go down really high and then I take the tiniest curve up. It's not even that much, but you can see just how much it slows you down there by, although you get there only like half a second slower, it, it does mean you're getting there at a slower speed too. And it's just an all round worse uh, thing. So yeah, two routes right there, going to the left, which is just continuously down, is better than going down and then going up. You don't really ever want to be going up with the Elytra. There are very few situations where that's a good idea and that kind of proves it in the speed and the height and everything else that you'll be having as you go along with that. So let's next talk about the best way to fly. If you've got a straight or if you've got something where you can just kind of dodge obstacles, how should you best do that? So I figured I'd do free uh, uh, speed tests of the Elytra. I've got what I call the lazy route and then I've got the kind of going down uh, naturally like you would in a car and then there's the going up and over which is what I've been finding to be the fastest, you know, in my like experience but I figured I'd test it anyway and uh, the result were kind of interesting because you can see in this first one, uh, you know, again, I'm just roughly pointing downwards. It's what I like to call the indecisive, where I'm just like, oh yeah, I'll change the angle as I go along, like you would do if you're just kind of not thinking about it. So it looks like this, and as you can see, 8.9 seconds and 33.5 meters, which is actually a lot of speed to have, and it's not a bad time. Then I decided to do the all the way down at first. Again, it looks like this, like it's a drop graph. This is what I did at the very start of this new mini game, and although it gets you there the fastest, 7.9 seconds, it only gets you there at 22.49 meters a second, which really is isn't that great at all. And then finally, we've got the final run, which is my newest strategy, which as I, as far as I can tell is the fastest one, where you kind of point downwards because even though it looks like, oh yeah, well you got there 0.6 seconds uh, slower, so it's a lot worse. Look at the speed I have as I get here. I'm at 37 meters a second, which means for literally 0.6 seconds more, I'm getting there at pretty much double the speed. And the reason this is such a big deal is because it means that if you're going anywhere beyond this distance, like if you're going into a, uh, you know, a boost, then the one I just uh, showed before was worth it. You're meant to lose your height and just get as much speed as you can, as fast as you can, and just hope for the best. However, if you're going for the long distance, you want to just slowly curve down. You want to have your graph look something like that because then you're going to have a much better time. Just a small uh, pro tip that isn't immediate, obviously. It's not immediately obvious because in real life and, you know, in other gliding games, usually you want to do the curve where you kind of bottom out first of all. However, that's not true in this game. You want to slowly curve it down. Uh, like I just said, the third of the three is the best way if you're going long distance. If there's a boost ahead of you, then you can do whatever you want because, you know, waste all the speed you need to in the world because it just gets replenished for free. And uh, yeah, well, that's said, let me next talk about turning of the Elytra because this one, again, it feels intuitive but just in case you wanted to see some results, here it is on the screen right now, here's me turning really, really sharply, you can see how my speed cuts all the way down to 20 and then I hit a wall, you can see the second time I'm like, okay, we'll turn a little bit sharp, not all the way sharp and uh, although, you know, the test doesn't go perfectly, you can see just how much the speed goes down, it's by like 4 meters before I hit the wall and then, oops, that's not a good idea and then finally I've got the last run here where I'm, you know, flying just like normal and I very subtly turn and you can see how I lose less than 2 meters a second on the entire curve. And although it's not quite as fast a curve, because I'm going fast around the curve, it's a, a better way to do it. Again, the most efficient curve is as close to the as possible, but it's actually not the best way to do it. You want to just have the slowest turn possible, because the sharper your turn, the more speed you lose. And it's a very bizarre thing, but basically the kind of point from both those things together is when you're turning left or right, you want to do it really softly. Like, I, I really just, like, nudge my stick the tiniest bit to go that way, and if you're going up and down, or I, if you're going down, I should say, if you're going up, then there's not much you can do, but if you're going down, you want to do that again kind of gradually, slowly, and you want to do it like increasing in intensity as you go downwards. So yeah, that, those are the two tips. They mostly only apply to this first straight of this game, but they're also pretty useful just to know about the Elytra in general, because usually there aren't that many objects. Glide is a mini game, and in the real world you don't find too many of those things. But yeah, well that's it. Let's move on next to talk about the, um, you know, the speed boosters. This is only for the mini game, but it's something I found massively interesting, because I did decide to test them thinking, well, I wonder how this is going to go. And you can see if you look um, really closely here, so there's, uh, you know, this, this is an orange booster. It takes you up to 30 
31 meters a second. I tested over and over again, it will take you up to 31 meters a second every single time. And if you take that same booster as me, you'll notice how it always kind of leaves you uh, running out of space. But if you go to the other booster, just left of it, this one takes you up to 40 something meters a second. That's right, every booster has a pre-programmed speed into it, and this one on the left of the other one is actually faster. There's tiny things like that that you might not think are possible, that you know don't make any sense, but this is just why you need to experiment with every single route possible when it comes to uh, the Glide minigame. The final thing you need to keep in mind if you really care about time, so it's not just caring about the routes and knowing how to you know cut your corners and stuff, one thing you also need to be doing is watching out for the uh, uh, pressing the restart button. So if you're playing solo like myself, then this is really fascinating because here is a one frame a second breakdown of what happens when you hit the restart button. So you can see how it doesn't actually teleport you straight to the start, it like teleports you through the map step by step in a really really weird way that you can't tell because it's happening so fast, but you can see by the time that you've stopped taking the damage, because again it counts as taking damage when you kind of die, so I'm taking damage, I'm taking this pain, and also the clock is running while the map is loading in, by the time it actually sets you off you go to 0.15 seconds. Again it's not that big of a deal for 99% of you, but if you're time trialing and you want to get the fastest speed possible, you know, uh, uh, you know, 0.15 seconds is the difference between the world record and between being like three places below him. So yeah, that's just something to keep in mind for those expert speedruns out there. Restarting the game is not quite as fast as just starting from scratch. Um, speed boost will give you different speeds, so make sure you check all of them. Give them all a try, like try every single route. I know I'm going to start doing that now. And uh, also you want to keep in mind that subtle and gradual is the best way to do anything. And now you know all of those things. I hope you did all enjoy this video. Again, there was a lot of research into this and like I did a bunch of other stuff that you didn't necessarily see here. But those are the basics you need to keep in mind. I hope you did all enjoy it. Like if you liked it, share if you really liked it. And subscribe if you're new around here because I make videos like this one every single day on my channel. And if subscribed, you'll see them daily on your homepage. Thank you all very much for watching and goodbye.